2022. No good time, full term date 9 12 2032, 20 year sentence. Potential exposure to AIDS, pornography involving juvenile, 75 counts molestation of a juvenile. That sound correct? Yes, sir. All right. How old are you? Uh, 61. How long have you been incarcerated? Uh, 10 years. 10 years on 20 years since? All right. Have you had any disciplinary write ups? Uh, just a one, well, it's six, but it's one in one incident. Um, so what was that? Um, when was it on the, well, the uh, April the 19th, 2021? April the 19th, 2021. Right, tell me what it was for. Um, I had asked, um, there was a mat that was sewn shut, and I asked a, um, a officer whether I could have that one or not, and she told me it was up to me. Um, and I took it, and then two months later, uh, she wrote me up for having it. So, um, kind of snowballed from there. Hey, tell me how it snowballed. What happened from there? Um, well, she she wrote me, had the dorm person write me up. Then I went to talk to her about it. And she said I was... Um, making a scene about it. Now we're just asking her about it. So she wrote me up for that. Um, and then um, she was doing something as far as um, against COVID regulations. So I told the uh, major at that point that um, I wanted to report a COVID regulation. And um, he told me that um, if I thought he was going to throw another officer under the bus that I had him fucked up and he locked me up and wrote a write-up that I cursed him out, and I didn't. Okay, so you had a whole bunch of stuff. Aggravated disobedience, theft, contraband. Right. Fines, aggravated disobedience. Tell me, uh, have you taken any sex offender treatment? Yes, sir. Have you taken all of them? Uh, everything, and then I've also taken the um, making a change for good. So you've taken four phases of sex offender treatment? Yes, sir. And what else have you taken? Uh, the making change for good. Do you have, do you have alcohol or, or drug problem? Um, no, sir, it was just socially. I've taken those courses off of them. Right. So tell me, uh, you know, with this crime, I mean, what, what, what happened there? How, how did you get involved in this situation? In the, which situation? Your crime. My crime. What you're in jail for. Um, I... made a, a very, very bad decision and mistake. Um, I pretty much lied and manipulated and uh, that wasn't like me on my and the rest of my life. 
Uh, I just over the, the the course of the time, I just you know said made made a horribly bad decision. Having intercourse with a thirteen year old for multiple years that's that's pretty bad. Yeah. And so you just you were on drugs, alcohol. You just did it. You involved in pornography. You just got involved. This is what you did. <laughs> Um, it was more, um, where he was at the house a lot, um, we got close, um, we obviously got too close, um, I was the one that should have stopped it and I didn't. He knew he was 13 at the time and 14 and 15 and 16. Right. What's your plan if you were to be released? Where are you gonna go? What you gonna do? Um, I have um uh property that I can live on. Um I have uh social security. Um I have everything lined up. As I, I have my medical insurance. Um, I even have a um, a Bogalusa uh, Behavior Health Clinic um, that I've got actually an appointment with. Um, I have everything. Um, what kind of work did you do before you uh, got in part with? Uh, management. Uh, management. Like, yeah, like JCPenney's, uh, drug stores, things like that. I don't have any, any more questions. Uh, staff, you have any input there? Uh, <clears throat> Ms. Frost uh, arrived at Raven. Correctional Center in uh, October of 2019. Uh, his only uh, disciplinary report is the six rule violations he got in 2021. Uh, he's currently full time education and medium security. Uh, other than the incident uh, in April of last year, he has not posed any type of security threat or security issues at the facility. Okay, thank you. We'll hear from Ms. Fitz Morris. You'd like to make a brief statement? Yes, sir. Um, my name's Tanya Fitz Morris. I'm 64 years old. Um, uh, Frederick is my brother. Uh, I have them, I've taken care of him, come to visit him twice a month for 10 years, send him money to be sure he has money on his account encouraged him to do everything he can. We have the means to provide him with a place to live, transportation, uh, odd jobs, should he need them. Um, I'm worried about his health. He's had some cancer cut off his face and ear, um, runs in the family. I'm, I'm terrified it's gonna get worse. Uh, I miss him horribly. He's my only living relative. And I would really like to see him come home, live out the days on the farm there. All right, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your coming. You're welcome. We're here from uh, Clark. Would you like to make a statement, Mr. Clark? Yes, thank you. Um, uh, first of all, uh, kind of working backwards uh, first, I'd like to point out the disciplinary reports because it's my understanding that Mr. Faust has claimed uh, before this board that he has one write-up. In fact, he has four write-ups from two different dates, two of which I think are very important in this. I believe uh, there was also some statement that he has not uh, maybe been a, uh, have any issues or anything like that. Uh, I'd like to note two of them. Mr. Faust has been placed in administrative segregation. 
This was for a April 18th, 2021 incident. Uh, the first of which is a defiance and aggravated disobedience, uh, which I believe Mr. Faust mentioned, but then severely underscored and failed to mention the fact that he also told a security officer there, uh, quote, you're going to listen to what I got to say right now, or my sister will be here tomorrow to see the warden. Uh, I take that, and I'm sure the correctional facility took that as a threat. Uh, in fact, they noted in their disciplinary report when he was placed in administrative segregation that they marked yes for threat to life, property, self, staff, or other inmates, as well as security or orderly running of the institution. We also have another significant report listed as contraband or theft, uh, again, was placed in administrative segregation, which it was found that uh, Mr. Faust, in this case, had a copy inside of his locker of the Rayburn Correctional Center security telephone directory, which is obviously a direct uh, safety violation on the report on the part of Mr. Faust. Uh, this is also in addition to uh, the bed, which was underscored again by Mr. Faust, uh, but also led to aggravated disobedience also. Uh, was not placed in segregation for those incidents, but these are two separate incidents of aggravated disobedience, one of defiance and one where he has the security phone numbers of the correctional facility. Um, I find it hard to believe that Mr. Faust at this point, if this is behavior while he's incarcerated, exactly what his behavior is going to be when he's, if he were to be let loose in the public. Obviously the crimes here are very concerning. We have an individual um, molesting a 13-year-old child in this case for several years. I've noticed that the PPI report has no statements from uh, Mr. Faust whatsoever about the incident. Uh, I think Mr. Faust was quite, uh, quite guarded in his uh, description of what has happened, uh, very limited as to what, if any, uh, remorse he has for this uh, particular case and for the actions. Uh, Mr. Faust has failed to mention the fact that while he was molesting a 13-year-old child, he was also HIV positive and was exposing this child to a potentially fatal disease in this case. That was not mentioned, nor the fact that the multiple counts of pornography that was located on his computer subsequent to the investigation for the molestation committed in this case. I think when you look at the totality of this circumstance, not just the absolute seriousness of this crime, the parts of the crime that are not even mentioned by Mr. Faust, given the fact that the, you then have a person who is completely defiant while sitting in prison, you know, this is not to say what he will do once he is released, his defiance, his threats, his obtaining confidential materials of that facility, he's a threat. The the, uh, the uh, Rayford Correctional Center has already determined he's a threat. They've placed him in segregation on two separate occasions to the point that they thought he was a threat. Based on all of these, the state would submit that uh, Mr. Fowles is certainly not a uh, candidate who should be granted parole at this time. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, now we'll hear from uh, Ms. Susan Woodrock. If you'd like to make a brief statement. Yes, sir. Good morning. Um, I, I'm, list, I'm sitting back and I'm listening to, you know, the the overview of what Mr. Faust was giving. You know, he doesn't even go back to the fact that he he really took advantage of a child who him being an adult, he entrusted with. You know, he really looked up to Carl. He looked at him as a friend. But at some point during this time, he made a choice to take the innocence away from this child. And this is ongoing throughout his life today. So his little broad overview of, I just, I'm, I'm really appalled to that because of what he did to this child. And it's taken my son over 10 years to get past a lot of this. So for him to have a little bit of a cancer removed from his face, 
it really does not bother me to say that I really don't care. And that, that's really all I got to say. Good. Thank you. Mr. Warren, would you like to make a brief statement? Yes. It, it, this, this entire situation is difficult for you can see my wife uh, as well as the rest of my family. Uh, we, Carl was our neighbor. He became trusted so much so that Carl came to, to uh, graduation, holiday at the house. Um, he, when, when he, he was in a panic one time that something was wrong with his heart. My wife and I and nurses, he came over in the middle of the night. We took, we, we, we checked him out to make sure everything was okay. And at that time, he's doing these very things to my son. He is penetrating my son. We trusted him. He, I considered him a friend. I was skeptical the entire time. I was always cautious. But he had driven this wedge between my family, my boys, and me to make me the bad guy, to make me the enemy of my kids. They hated me. So I, I decided, well, I, I, what little relationship I have with them, I will allow them to be friends with Carl. And he was a predator and he destroyed my family. I'm sorry to be this emotional, sir. I, 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 but that's the way I see this. I, I, I don't hate Carl. I, I gave him forgiveness at the, at the day of the trial. I, 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 he, he asked for me for forgiveness and I said, you're forgiven. That way I could take this hate out of my my heart, my uh, so 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 I wouldn't be because because that poison just poisons me the hate, and and this has just stirred all this up again. I, I thought we weren't going to go through this process of parole because that's what we agreed to in a plea bargain, but obviously we didn't understand. We, you, you really, if you go through the process, you really have no like we have now victims advocates you have you don't have that at the time and so you're just kind of sitting there um and and we agreed to a plea bargain which if we'd have gone to trial it wouldn't be 20 years it'd be a lot longer than that i'm sure but we decided that the plea bargain would be the way to go to avoid trial to just get this settled and and, and i ask that you honor that 20 years that he stays there I, like I said, I have no hate for him, but that's the way I feel. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, uh, would uh, Warren the second like to make a, a statement? No, he says he's fine. He's fine. Okay. He does not want to make a statement at this time. Great. Sounds great. Just, okay. If I can, just for one second, I also would like to note, I don't think this was noted earlier, that uh, apparently Mr. Faust still owns the property next to the victims, a victim's parent parents in his case and i think that's all another concern that i just wanted to make sure the board was aware of yes sir thank you so much yes sir we're, we're aware we we have a an exhaustive uh file and so we're aware of, of, of everything that we have all really good information and thank you guys uh i'd like to make a statement on your behalf um yes sir um it's the panel Sir, speak to us, the panel. Um, I, it's been said that I am taking this lightly, um, and there's, you know, I I deal with it every day from what I did, um, and I regret it. Uh, unbelievably from what I did. I also would like to say um, that as far as the time is concerned, um, in the very beginning, 
there was a plea deal I had for five years where the family would receive the land, that 15 acres next to them, they were gonna receive that land. So, and I would just serve five years. I turned that down because I was not aware of it. It was made in my behalf. Now I understand uh, what I did, However, that also needs to be noted that I guess it was okay for me to only do five years if I gave them $65,000, $70,000 worth of land. Because if I would have done that, I would be free right now. Um, but I did not do that because I don't do things like that. So, I mean, it's not like, um, you know, I, 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 I understand what I did. I've, I've made amends for it. I've always been in close to God, but, um, as far as he said, his kids hated him. Um, they didn't hate him because of me. They hated him because he punched them in their face. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. We, we, all right. We, 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 we got you. So, uh, so that, that's good. So we're, we're just here to hear why you think you should be released. That's good. You know, panel prepared to vote. Yes. All right. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Mr. Faust, you know, you, obviously I'm going to deny you. you. You have really no clue. You, you have no clue of what you've done. You have no clue of the concept of what's going on. It, it is strictly about you. I mean, you know, if your comments are inappropriate, you, you, you need to take victim awareness. You know, that look, if you, if, and, and if there's just, there's nothing that I heard out of your mouth that makes me think that you have any remorse, you have any understanding of the crime you committed in anything. So my vote is to deny your parole uh, and, and, you know, for you to, to try to look internally and figure it out. But, but that's, that, that's bad. You have no clue. Mr. Russia. Uh, Mr. Paul, today is not the day. I agree with everything Mr. Kelsey just stated. You have no idea the ramifications of your crime on a victim and a victim's family. I want to speak to the victim's family right now. I am the victim advocate of this uh, panel, and you don't ever have to worry about just false living within three miles of your residence. You will be under a sex offender contract. That contract will state any candidate here within three miles of the victim, a thousand miles of the school playground, uh, anything that deals with a juvenile, he cannot live within a thousand feet, plus, he cannot live within three miles of your present residence. You will get out one day. But you will never have to worry about Mr. Paul's living in close proximity to you. Based upon an express opposition from law enforcement, the DA's office, who is adequately opposed to release the victim's family, and based on your general, uh, general disciplinary conduct, you've had six. Past these write ups within 14 months of this hearing, I vote to deny your request. And you should examine your conscience and figure out exactly what you did that victim in your family. Mr. Uh, Freeman? Uh, I concur with both of my colleagues. I vote to deny. Three votes to deny today. Your vote has been denied.
Cockroach. I mean, you can't, you wouldn't believe it unless you've seen it. That was it was just shocking. I really um, appreciate that might have been Kelsey's finest moments for me. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of him. I mean, I like his style for certain uh, hearings, like the revocation hearings. He keeps the pace going, but he, he kind of lacks empathy towards towards victims typically. And um, for that reason, I I'm just haven't been a fan. And he's also just doesn't have any background. He's a physical therapist, uh, the judge. I mean, the, the governor must have just liked him and put him in the position. I don't know. But he did a good job there. And he, he, I guess it's just so important to see these hearings. You can see that real crazy people exist. I mean, these are – he does not think he did anything wrong. He thinks, like, that you just listen to the words that he's saying. He, he – intentionally expose this boy to full-blown AIDS, which it seems, thank goodness, the boy didn't contract. When talking about it, he said, I made a mistake. I made a bad decision. We got close. We got too close. And it's like, what are you saying? He's still saying that they got close, that he got... Like it, 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 and it reminded me, it's, it, it's a boy. He's a boy. It's really great to see Brian Clark taking this. You know, he brings a family into his office. He, you know, right at the beginning, he's the first one on the screen. You know that, that this roach saw the assistant DA and just like shriveled up into his little roach self. But he might be so entirely disassociated with re reality. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. Um, the father says, I was skeptical the entire time, but he drove a wedge between me and my kids. I mean, it's, can you get, he, he becomes friends with his family. He manipulates himself into the family. He drives a wedge between the parents, gets the kids to hate him, and then does, and it's just like, And what they mentioned by the whole idea without having the victim's advocates and just not really understanding the system and taking the plea deal and thinking that this couldn't happen again. And it just shows like a lot of people go into this not really understanding. They thought, hey, 20 years means I don't need to worry about this for 20 years. But no, and so they had to worry about it. Then his final speech, he just goes like his full blown true colors come out, not as if we needed to, I mean, to the ex max. I deal with it every day and, and, uh, um, I turned down a deal for five years plus land because I didn't know about it. So he, like, he starts, like, I turned down the deal for five, but I, I didn't know about it. Then he, he goes back on the statement. But it was okay if I gave them the land, but I didn't do that because I don't do things like that. And what he's trying to say is they were willing to take money for me to serve less time. You know, like that's in his mind. He was trying to say that like, but I have principle. I, I'm, I have character. I would never exchange money. They, and look at, they exchange money and it's like, Um, yeah, and, and he like totally doesn't even realize how, and then he takes it, he says, <laughs> he says, I made amends. I've been close to God. It's like, this has nothing to do. You've made amends. You've made, like, he really thinks that they wronged him. They put him in prison he says, I've made amends. I'm a godly man. And then he goes on to say, and he didn't hate them because of me. He hated them because he would punch them in the face. And then the board shut him up. And that father, oh my gosh. I mean, 
if he could see daggers getting sent his way. And, uh, right, I mean, it's just... It's just, you can't make it up. I mean, it's so important. The, here is someone who put his, who, who tore apart his family, who literally put his kids, who, who abused his kids, who did, and then, and, 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 and exposed them to, 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 and just everything, their whole family. Like, imagine you built, you invest in your family from the time that you're babies. You create a culture in your family. You do everything. And then this roach comes into your life and just rips it all apart. And then on this plea deal, which 20 years plea deal is pretty good in Louisiana. I mean, that's why I'm not screaming off the rooftops. It's, uh, you know, it wasn't an eight-year deal. It wasn't a 10-year deal. It was 20 years, which which is on the high end of the spectrum. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know why it couldn't have been life, but, you know, just for the, just for the exposing to, to AIDS part, I mean, you would think that you could, but the, but he still comes here and insists that he, and, and thinks that he's the good guy. And it's, and uh was, And even has to have a jab in at the family, but hopefully he'll serve his full sentence. And he is still in custody, and still at Rayburn, which is which is a good thing. Um, this hearing took place in 2022. I don't know if we'll get an, you know, when is the next one is to think that this family will have to keep dealing with it. It's, so that is a very sad thing. Um, but it, it's nice to hear that, that now they do, are doing things to help look with, with victims advocates and stuff like that. And as much as this DA sometimes gets on my nerves, it's so nice to see him show up for these type of hearings. So I guess you take the good with the good on this case. Good morning. Happy Thursday. This is M Lit, L I T T. All right. Hey. Thank you. All right. We're ready for our first case. Please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. My name is Logan Langley. Uh, my DOC is 70, I mean, 740801. All right, Logan, you heard the introduction. We'll have a parole interview. We'll ask you some questions. You can respond. At the end, you can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right, Logan Langley, DOC number 740801. You're a first class offender, not eligible for good time. Parole eligibility date 624 2022. Full term date 924 2023. You have a five year sentence, uh, formal knowledge of a juvenile. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. Please answer Mr. Alvin Rosary's question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Logan. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm I'm all right. Yeah. Where's your family this morning? Uh well, my dad and my mom thought it was at 10 30. Okay. okay. Logan. Yes, sir. You're you're 24 years old. You've been incarcerated for 45 months on a six month sentence. Is that about right? On a, on a six month sentence? On a 60 month sentence. Yes, sir. Five, you were sentenced to five years for a felony cardinal knowledge. Four years of that sentence was suspended. And after that, after being released, you had to serve a three-year probationary period. Is that right? Yes, sir. So you were incarcerated for about seven or eight months, and you were released in September of 2019. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And you reported to your parole officer to set up all of your supervision 
um, information, information, and to set up your sex offender contract. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And when you were in the parole office, your parole officer discovered that your address was in 1,000 feet of a school. Is that correct? Uh, the address so, I had? Uh, so your original address was in violation of your, your sex offender contract because it was in with, within 1,000 1, feet of your of a school, is that correct? Yes, sir. So your parole officer helped you out and found another residency plan that was suitable for your sex offender contract. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And I think it was on September 5th, you met with your parole officer and you showed him an agreement for a lease agreement on that apartment. Is that correct? A lease agreement on an apartment? On a place where you were going to live? Uh, yes, sir. Did your landlord sign that agreement? My, the, at the lady's place I was going to stay at Stan? Yeah. Was that, was that your landlord's signature on that agreement? Excuse me, that, that was a while back. Uh, so what I'm getting at is the agreement that you showed your parole officer was forged and you signed the lady's name, is that correct? Oh, no, sir. Uh, she signed it. Well, I was I was going to live at her house, but... Sir, did, did you sign that agreement for your landlord. Yes, sir. But but she gave me the right to because she wasn't there at the time. And why why did the judge revoke you for forging your landlord's signature? Because I wasn't there. I mean I will. I was working, I was working in software at the time and I didn't want to. So, sir, 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 you're 24 years old. You know the difference between telling the truth and telling something that's not true. Why did the judge revoke the supervision? Because I wasn't staying at the address. One day after your parole officer visited your address that he approved, you moved back to the address that was not approved. Is that correct? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Why did you feel it necessary to live at an address that was in violation of your sex offender contract? Because I didn't want any trouble with Dakota, which was my best friend, because he was always causing trouble at the house. And I had no transportation to work in Sulphur, to Sulphur every day to go to work. So you, you felt it was better for you to violate your supervision in your sex offender contract and to have some difficulty with the coder. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And your role officer approved the address when the coder was? What? Yes, sir. Did you tell him that you were having difficulty with a person who lived at that address? Yes, sir. See, Dakota has a child and I didn't want to be there with the child there. And they're okay, always- first of all, sir, sir, 
If a juvenile child lived at that, that address, your parole officer would not have accused that address. So don't tell me that your parole officer approved the address in which a juvenile child was living. They wasn't living there. They were always over there. You, but you, always, you just told me they were living there. No, they they were always over there. Okay, now let, let, let's continue uh, because I don't think I'm going to get the actual full truth from you this morning. Tell me about your disciplinary write-ups. How many disciplinary write-ups have you had since you've been incarcerated? I, I've had none. Tell me about the program you completed since incarceration. I have completed the sex offender treatment program and the anger management program at uh, the Steve Hall at the Steve Hall at BDCC. And when did you finish the sex offender treatment program? At BDCC uh, Bayou Dorchy Correctional. When did oh. you complete it? I'm sorry, uh, March 25th of this year. I only see two faces. Have you been page three and four? Yes, sir. I, I finished all of it. All four faces? Yes, sir. Okay. Have, you had, have you had any? Uh, occasions where you use illegal drugs? No, sir. No marijuana? I don't. You never drug. I've never done a drug. Ever. You have opposition? Uh, you have opposition from the judge? Uh, she said, you need to complete sex offender treatment. You have opposition from the VA's office. You said you are not compliant with your registration. And he's a threat to the community. You have opposition from the sheriff's office. You said you are a true time offender. Have you been convicted of any other time? Uh I've had, um, I think this was back in 16, and I had another carnal knowledge, but uh, it got dropped in court. But you were arrested for another carnal knowledge. Sir? You were arrested for another carnal knowledge. Yes, sir. How, but how, old, how old was the victim? She was 16, and I was 18. You have opposition from the chief of police in Dorita, Louisiana. Both the victim and the victim's family chose not to comment on this hearing. Yes, sir. Tell me, um, Mr. Langley, what is your transition plan right now? Where do you live and where do you plan to work? I will be, I do plan on living in uh, in Karen Crow, Louisiana with my aunt, Deidre, and she she will be letting me stay there for $250 a month. And my dad has planned me a job uh, with his, one of his friends that he worked with, that he used to work with in construction. Uh, I put it on my parole packet, or they signed it on my parole packet. As was Deanna, Deanna Lane. De, Deidre. Is Deidre? Okay. Okay. I think it's signed Deanna, but it's Deidre, okay? Yeah, Ms. Deidre Champagne. Okay, okay. And where do you plan to work? Uh, at a construction company. It's called it's called Jones and Associates. Um, 
I was working there before I went went to jail. Hey, um, but my dad has also set me up a job working for one of his friends. I I have no current clue what the job is about, but I know it's for construction. Officer Graham again. Officer. Sir. Staff, staff. Is the staff in the room? Is the facility staff in the room, sir? Uh, she's right here. Officer. Would you give us your name again, please? I'm sorry, what did you say? Your name. M. As in Mary, last name is L I T T. Oh, Officer Lit, how are you? All is well. Happy Thursday, and how are you? Fine, with your beautiful smile. Do you have any documentation that is completed all four phases of the sex offender treatment? My record shows that he's only completed the first two phases. And he's in his phase one and two, March of 2022. Do you have anything in his file uh, that tells me that he's completed all four phases of his sex offender treatment? Let me go pull his file. Okay. Give me a half a sec, I'll pull his file. Does my record show that you completed phase one and two on March 25th? 2022. So I graduated on the program on March, uh, I think it was March 20, 25th. I got a I got a 99 on my last phase on phase four. Okay. Well, your record does not show phase three and four. I just want to verify it. Hey, why did you doctor this document to get approval from your parole officer? Sir? Why, doctor, why did you sign somebody else's name on a housing agreement to get by your parole officer? Sir, I was, I was scared. I was scared. I didn't want to go back to jail, and I wasn't thinking of the consequences of my actions. And 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 that that is my fault for doing it. And I just I just wanted to stay home, but that caused it not to. Somebody very wise told me once that when you tell a lie, you tell you can't tell it the same way the second time. Because the first time you told me you had a permission to sign the next. I did. And you just told me that you were afraid that you were going to get re incarcerated if you get by your parole officer. Knowing that you were going to move the next day back, Telfer, you did that to get by your floor officer. And two weeks later, you found out from your landlord that you left the next day and didn't intend to stay at that house. And that's why the judge revoked you. Am I right? Yes, sir. Why did you tell me that up front? Because I, I wasn't. Because you're not ready to be released. No, sir, I am. No, oh, I am. Oh. It, it, it was my fault for doing it, you know. And... But if you're responsible and you understood the ramifications of this hearing, you would have told me this in the beginning. I was taking you're taking the sex offender treatment, you've taken anger management, 
And I think you need to take some other courses. Hundred dollars, please. Thank you for a change, so that you can be fully ready to be released when you are released. So this won't happen again. This is the second time that you've been arrested for the same thing. You have a, a propensity to date younger females than you should. And we have to come to grip with that and realize that it is against the law for a adult to date someone that's under age. And I don't think you've come to that conclusion. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It, it doesn't show in his folder because we don't do those classes here. And the, deal, the DOC officers yeah. stepped away from her desk. Okay. Okay. So she could pull up his entire record and she's away from her office. Uh, do we have anything in his record to show that? My dad has. Maybe we Check our records, um, Mr. Langley, because I want to be sure that you complete all four phases. And I have another problem with you, with your supervision and your blatant disregard to your supervision contract. If you did that once, you'll do it again. And I, and I want you to understand fully when you are released that you are a sex offender. You must attend sex offender classes and you must abide by that contract to the left. And now I don't think you're ready to do that. Uh, uh, so, I had a question. That was a statement. Yes, sir. And so what it was. Yeah, that's all we did. All right, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Yes, sir. Um, my name is Logan, and and I would like to say I have been in jail for three years, almost three years, and and I feel really remorseful what I've done, and. I'm sorry for what I've done. I did lie. And I, I met I'm I miss being I miss being with my family. I miss I miss, I miss everything about life. This this life here is not is not a life to live. Uh, my dad will help me when I get home. We have a place, and the only reason why I didn't feel comfortable and and over there because. I know I just wanted to I didn't feel comfortable over there where I was staying when I was out because of the people around me and I was only using the place to get home and stay out but I shot that down with my chances um, um, not not taking responsibility enough um, to do it. 
Um, but if y'all would be gracious uh, and help me, I can show y'all, I can show you all that I can do better and that I will do better when I do get home. And I have help to do this. All right. All right, thank you. Thank you for your comment. All right, town fair to vote, Mr. Roche. Mr. Langley, based upon your interview today, based upon a poor supervision performance, based upon you violating your sex offender contract the first week of your supervision in a moderate risk assessment score, which tells us that you have a moderate chance of reoffending. I'm going to deny your request today. Mr. Freeman. Uh, Mr. Langley, uh, it's tough being a sexton. I'm an ex-probation and parole officer. Uh, people get uprooted from their homes and uh, you know, I, and I understand how your position was, because I've seen it every day. Uh, that is no excuse for what you did. You know, you shouldn't have lied, you shouldn't have uh, falsified that, that signature, but I, I'm gonna vote to grant. Uh, I think you have a, a residence plan now that will be approved. You have an employment plan, and I think you've served enough time for your thing. One vote to grant, one vote to deny. I'm also going to vote to deny your parole for the same reasons as Mr. Roche stated. Two votes to deny and one to grant. Today, your parole has been denied. Good luck to you. We'll adjourn at Tinsaw at 1026. You know, you can't. He, uh, can you imagine? This is his second carnal knowledge. His second. And the judge says, you know what, we'll give you uh, a five-year sentence, but we'll commute like basically four of it. He served less than one year of, the, of his sentence. He gets out and he gets revoked just pretty much immediately. Then he comes up and he, he, he's messing with the wrong board. Mr. Roche is as sharp as a tick, smart like a fox. He picks up that lie. I mean, how can he be so... It was incredible to watch. It's incredible to watch Mr. Roche in action. He does not miss a thing. And he said, someone once told me that you can't tell the same lie twice. And <laughs> the first time... He told me you had permission to forge the signature. And it's like, he, he, he needs to like serve this full sentence because like he needs to know that he can't get away with it. And he seems that he's been getting away with it all his life. He had the first charge that was just dropped. The second charge, he only had to serve one year and he revoked it immediately after doing things, which like, he's obviously not taking anything seriously. And now they're going to make him serve his full time. He still is serving uh, his sentence. Um, how bad of a roach is he? It's hard to know. He was, he claims he was 18, she was 16, and you know, they didn't bring anything up. My guess is that he continues to do that. Um, now is it is it possible that he's gonna continue to stick with those ages as he gets older? You know, there I I, I don't know about the, the those things. In in Louisiana, it is a elite, it's a it's it, my understanding it's okay to have a relationship. As long as the parents don't object, but you can't have, it can't be a, a, a sexual relationship. Um, they want to avoid uh, teenage pregnancies, or I shouldn't say teenage because 18 is okay, but they want to avoid child pregnancies. And he, um, I think one would also assume that the parents care because it's being stopped. Imagine if you, oh God, I don't want to say it, and he's dating your, 
your daughter. Uh, you know, I mean, high school, you got to assume that high school is full of seniors and juniors dating. Um, so it's, it's, it's obviously not, I mean, it seemed it's, it's kind of be happening. It's not like, it's just not the same thing. Right. But in this case, I'm, I, I, one has to assume there's something more to it. Um, but the idea that he was caught once and they dropped the charges, it didn't scare him enough to go and do it again. And then that didn't scare him enough to not go and break the rules. So it's, it's definitely, uh, in my opinion, the obvious right move to uh, to have revoked him here.